I would like to request Professor Dayanin, the Dean of Goa Business School, to address the gathering. Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome, uh, Sukhvinderji. Uh, I'm uh, my uh, camera is not functional, so and uh, the sound probably is 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 uh, clear. I hope there are network issues uh, all over the place. Uh, a very warm welcome again to the Goa Business School. The Goa Business School is uh, comprising of four different disciplines, which were the erstwhile departments, the Department of Computer Science, the Department of Economics, the Department of Commerce, and the Department of Management Studies. We offer uh, eight programs uh, on the campus here. Uh, two programs are at the undergraduate level, which is the integrated MSc in data sciences and uh, the integrated MBA, five-way integrated MBA in hospitality and tourism. Apart from this, we offer six different programs at the postgraduate level. We have three MBAs. There is an MBA general, there is an MBA financial services, and there is an executive MBA. Apart from this, we have the MCOM program, the MA economics program, and the MCA program. So these form the eight uh, programs that we are offering. Uh, we are also uh, instrumental or partly instrumental in, uh, in offering an MA in Environmental Studies, which is located in the School of Earth, Ocean and Atmospheric Sciences. Uh, it's, it's a very interesting program as well. So we are on the threshold of uh, embarking on, uh, you know, uh, different programs that we have already started and trying out some new ones. And uh, what best uh, approach then to look at sports management as a very interesting area, given the fact that we have just concluded with the largest hall of medals in the Olympics. That said, 130 million, 130 billion, or rather 1.3 billion population is not a very, uh, you know, small one when we look at the kind of uh, sports activities that are happening all over the country and the kind of honors that are given to all sports people across the different disciplines in sports uh, in, in our country. You take uh, football, you take uh, tennis, you take cricket, uh, you have everything out there. So I'm, I'm sure the session by uh, Mr. Sukhinder Singh will be extremely rich in terms of his own experience as well as a foresight into what can what sports can achieve and what can we do to make sports achieve stuff especially from the viewpoint of professionalizing uh, the entire sports management uh, scenario and uh, as a keen sportsman myself i'm looking forward to this particular session so over to you, Ridya, for uh, the introduction and uh, further. Thank you so much, Sukhvinder, for gracing this occasion. Thank you, sir. I would like to welcome our guest speaker for today, Mr. Sukhvinder Singh. Mr. Sukhvinder Singh is a director at Singh Sports Ventures Private Limited. Mr. Singh is a unique sports professional in India. He has a deep understanding of Indian football at grassroots level, having played in various national championships growing up. Mr. Singh holds an MBA in marketing from Institute of Management, Nirma University. Apart from being a strong professional, he has worked in the sports industry. He is skilled in football, management, sports marketing, marketing and sports management. The former Santos Trophy player served as FC Goa CEO for two seasons and also relaunched the ambitious football academy and its vision around skill development, community engagement and women empowerment. Mr. Singh worked with Nike India to establish and develop their football brand in the country during its initial phase in 2005. After leaving Nike, he was the head of marketing for the AIFF. 
he became an important part of the federation's professionalization as he revamped the marketing department in 2011 he was appointed the managing director of libero sports india and was responsible for conceptualizing the managing and managing the long term key projects that integrated the company's core strengths in consulting player representation and sponsorship placement currently he runs his own firm called the sing sports ventures so over to you sir thank you ridya for a generous introduction yes uh, it it pretty much indicates that i've been around in the sports industry for quite some time and sports for me is uh, currently a profession but also importantly is a very very strong passion that i've had since my playing days so thank you for the introduction and um, especially uh, again a massive thanks to you professor dan as well as uh, professor bode for uh, inviting me and uh, feeling me worthy enough for uh, you know doing proper justice to the fomento lecture series by uh, goa business school uh, i've had a um, uh, decent bit of understanding in terms of what have been the programs uh, that uh, uh, goa university uh, goa business school has been embarking on and i think it's very impressive uh, for for an institute which is based out of goa which again i feel is full of opportunities as we go along Uh, i think um, it's it's only right and it's only needed that we keep on developing good professionals uh, to supply to the industry and these professionals for me are going to come from educational institutions like yours uh, so in that sense i think the goa business school uh, with again you know all the opportunities that me as a professional has been looking at i think um, is something uh, really much needed and you already embarked on a lot of areas uh, in terms of providing professionals uh, to the industry and this will have definitely a uh, massive impact not only in the short term but also long term so thank you again for having me uh, a big big disclaimer to everyone that uh, i'm not as seasoned as a uh, educator or or uh, uh, as an academician as uh, pro- uh, the the distinguished professors uh, on this particular panel or uh, the, the the teachers and the mentors that you might have encountered uh, but what i will speak would be from a point of view of a professional and also understanding the needs of students like you uh, the needs uh, that that future professionals that might have not only in terms of uh, gaining access to the academic concepts uh, knowledge but also certain bit of insights that i picked up during my experiences uh, so let me just try to share the screen just allow me half a second is it visible yes sir yes it is visible on this was just give me half a second guys okay so again thank you once again before i start i just wanted to uh again as i said put in that bit of disclaimer that uh, the the point of view that i will bring uh, to this uh, session to this lecture essentially would be based on certain experiences and also uh, the fact that uh, the needs of students like you who are on the verge of getting into the industry uh, i i definitely would want to provide some bit of light not only the academic concepts but also on the uh, practical insights uh so yeah that's me uh and uh, over a period of 20 years again i have the uh, i had the opportunity to 
be in the industry not only as a professional but over a period of time i experimented with quite a few things and it allowed me uh, to interact with a lot of institutions uh, educational institutions and very very recently i was able to complete a book it's called the goa goals uh, it's it's based on the football uh, uh, ecosystem in goa uh, i'll just take you through my professional journey very very quickly a uh, lot of people do get surprised when i actually tell them that after being a player after having been a sports person uh, my first job into the sports industry was never a sports job it actually started with lot of learnings on ground uh, with a brand called cafe coffee day yes i did complete my mba in 2003 uh and uh, at that particular time the sports industry was not that evolved uh, but uh, a professional like me also wanted to validate all the learnings that i've had in my mba program uh to to take it out, out on the ground and then learn a lot more about the practical aspects not only of marketing brand but also promotions and uh media so this is where my my journey started with a brand called cafe coffee day in 2003 the brand was essentially looking at creating more and more awareness and for me it was an opportunity to learn the profession a lot more as i said by that time my understanding of management and marketing was limited to the mba course that i had done but it gave me a opportunity to go out and uh, practically implement and apply whatever i had learned so that was 2003 over a period of 2 years uh, things opened up uh, and uh, while cricket uh, definitely dominated the sporting circuit my passion which was football uh, essentially had certain limited opportunities having said that then came nike nike which is again a world renowned brand uh, into the country and they were essentially looking at uh, solidifying their core concepts around uh, the product as well as sports marketing and this is where i got a chance to really focus on my core capabilities which was sports marketing uh, and at that time the brand was trying to leverage its global brand uh, imagery that it had to create uh, businesses in the country all india football federation is something which is more like an equivalent of bcci which is for cricket for football is all india football federation uh, in 2005 the whole process of professionalization of uh, football started happening uh, driven by fifa and asian football confederation and aiff was a big beneficiary of that particular focus and this is where while the all india football federation was trying to authenticate itself trying to actually become a lot more sturdy and solid uh, as the apex body of the sport in the country it was my uh, opportunity where i could build my expertise uh, in 2008 libero sports uh, was funded by uh, my investors in chicago and we essentially started looking at possible opportunities in japan and india uh, which falls in the asian continent and this is where uh, i think it was more of a startup mode that i switched myself into and while libero sports was looking at a very very strong positioning that could benefit its uh, itself over a long period of time for me it was to test out my enterprise skills and this is where i think i turned a little bit of entrepreneur for about 5 years and uh, goa came calling goa is goa i mean nobody can ever not uh, consider an opportunity to come and uh, live in goa work in goa and i was very very fortunate that at that time mr shrinivas bempo and mr datra salgaonkar who owned who created and owned fc goa uh, the iconic club in goa uh, Uh, they were looking for a ceo who who could come and manage the businesses and for me uh, while the the major major focus for fc goa was to promote itself uh, so that it ultimately could uh, get all the kind of economic stability that we wanted uh, for me it was time to deliver for me it was not any more about learning or uh, just trying to understand uh, you know what what's going out uh, there in the market it was always about delivering delivering the annual balance sheet delivering a very very healthy uh, club which essentially uh, is a very well rounded brand also uh, and uh, over a period of time again realized that uh, my my passion was taking me a little deeper into uh, football development and i'm sure a lot of people uh, who belong to goa have heard about sesa goa and their initiative on sesa football academy uh, which has been going on since 99 and this was a time in 2017 where everybody wanted to recreate Uh, the the whole model of sesa football academy uh, which could be driven uh, into the communities which could be driven into uh, women empowerment as well as grassroots 
and this is what I, I uh, did while the brand was trying to create that bit of equity. For me, it was very, very important to also develop uh, my, my core skill sets, which with a long term perspective. And in 2019, yes, the, the year before the pandemic uh, struck the entire world, uh, it was always about a decision where we wanted to create our own projects, our own intellectual properties, as well as create create better values to all the stakeholders involved in Indian sports. And this is where we based our, ourselves out of Goa. A lot of people do talk about the startup uh, phase that is catching up in Goa. Uh, a lot of it essentially is focused on technology, but we, we do believe with all the infrastructure it has, with all the passion as well as uh, the beauty uh, that, that the state has, I think sports is something that can be integrated beautifully well. And this is where Sing Sports Ventures is, is focused on not only to kind of go out and create a well-meaning long, long-term sustainable projects but also glorify Goa in the, in the world of sports and bring in more and more healthier concepts into Goa. Uh, the reason guys I, I put in this particular slide uh, was to give you a little understanding that in the blue uh, boxes the stage of the brands that we were looking at within the country was also equally important and relevant to what I was trying to do. So whenever you're looking at your organization and if you in particular, if you're looking at sports industry, always look at not only what the brand or the company or the organization or the institution is trying to achieve, but also look at your valuable contribution that not only will help uh, the organization, but also build you as, as a future sports person. Uh, professional so i just wanted to start off with this particular slide and uh, how many of you recognize uh, this this young man uh, here with with a spear in his hand and i'm sure most of you will uh, especially after what happened uh, uh, last saturday uh, neeraj chopra a boy from panipat became an inspiration uh, to the entire nation and uh, I came across a beautiful line which says a few grams of gold, which is the Olympic gold, can uplift, unite and inspire the nation. And which is so true. And I'm sure uh, within your circles, within your families, friends, relatives, everybody by now uh, would have known Neera Chopra. And this is the power of sports. This is the power of Olympics. This is the power of the spirit, uh, which essentially can unite a lot of people. Ultimately, it's not only about unification, but I'm given to understand that a lot of young kids now essentially looking at track and field. The last possible uh, inspiration, the biggest of the inspiration that we ever had was Milka Singh. And ultimately, a biopic was created. So everybody in the world knows about Milka Singh. But today, I think uh, Neera Chopra essentially will carry that baton forward and really inspire the new generation uh, that, that comes along. So just wanted to put this slide in. Uh, to give you a little bit of hint that sports has some major, major powers, which goes beyond economics, which goes beyond the industry and then can really uh, create inspiration, which nobody else can. Uh, for this particular session, guys, um, I'll limit myself to about uh, 35 minutes to 40 minutes of conversation with you from my side. And then I would love to open it up for uh, um, Q&A because I do believe that uh, while we have the limitation of this virtual world, we, we are not in a physical class. Uh, it's still very, very important to get uh, some bit of interactivity. Ultimately, uh, th this entire lecture is for benefit of you. And in, in whatever way, if there are clarifications, questions uh, or insights for me to also pick uh, from, from this session, I think I'll be very, very happy doing that. Sports industry. So when you when you talk about sports industry, um, all you students and future professionals, they must be thinking about certain brands. And if I put up these brands uh, on on your screen, uh, essentially uh, there's a lot of heterogeneity in in this particular slide. While you have Nikes and Reeboks and Under Armours, which are uh, apparel and sporting equipment brands, you also have a broadcaster. You also have a nutrition. Uh, drink and uh, you also have something called as ea sports esports in that particular sense so just to open up your thinking and give you a little flavor in terms of what this sports industry is all about i wanted to put up this slide and give you a little indication that it's not only about product it's not only about services but it's also about future concepts it's also about health it's also about nutrition in that sense yeah now when you keep on thinking about sports industry, what else comes to your mind? 
Does this gentleman who also was uh, the the co-owner of my club FC Goa uh, excites you? Uh, Leo Messi. Uh, I don't know how many uh, hearts were broken last two days when um, there is a massive breakup between Barcelona and Leo Messi. Uh, but yes, uh, very much a legend. Uh, Roger Federer again at 40. What he's done and what he's doing is is incredible. And a uh, lot of uh, guys in the driving circuit and automa automotive sports circuit would definitely never forget uh, somebody like him. And somebody beyond uh, Neeraj Chopra who inspired the entire generation and especially a lot of young girls, PV Sindhu. So when we are talking about sports industry, um, we are essentially talking about names also. It's not only the brands now, but it's also about the athletes, the individual athletes, right? But sports is also about team, isn't it? So the leagues were created, IPL, Indian Super League, Pro Kabaddi League, as well as something which has been going on for ages, the WWF, which ultimately converted to WWE. And then we have this whole concept of MMA wrestling, mixed martial arts, and everything going on, right? Uh, so we looked at the brands, we looked at organizations which are trying to create products and services, we looked at athletes. We are looking at leagues right now, which essentially provide a platform for all these athletes, teams, and brands to come in. And then, of course, teams and franchise, which essentially become very, very important because these are the organizations which are driving the professional sports forward. At one point of time, when we didn't have the league, uh, before maybe the 90s, uh, when, when the football league came in, before uh, late 2000s when the, the IPL happened, I think which was very, very tournament driven uh, nation that we were. Uh, we essentially relied on all the players and uh, teams to showcase themselves either in meets and tournaments and tours, but we never had a, a you know league system. And the, the league essentially is the future of professional sports, not only created which obviously for, for last 10 uh, plus years IPL has shown us, but also for a lot of other sports. And I'll tell you the reason why. But before that, I, I wanted to you know, give you a little sense of the uniqueness of our industry. Our industry or sports as compared to any other area is, uh, it, it, you know, has some unique characteristics which includes irrational passion. I've spoken to a lot of students, young minds, and even if I offer them a subsequent incentive to go out and change their loyalties, to the biggest of the clubs or the, the, the teams that they follow, they won't. And ultimately, uh, even if you go out and look at this particular picture, which is about the Leeds fan, uh, for, for many, many years, they were down and out, but still kept on believing. And over a period of time, they kept, came back into the Premier League. So there must be something which defies logic, which defines re reasoning. And this essentially is something for us in the sports industry, which is irrational passion. I'll talk a little more about it, but also our industry is driven by professional sports in particular is driven by commonality of interest. While you compete, you didn't compete very, very hard. It's also very, very important that all the teams within the league, all the players along with Neera Chopra or PV Sindhu, everyone, all the Japanese badminton players, all the athletes coming in from Ukraine or, or Russia, they, they were also as important. Uh, for for the, the Olympics to happen or for the leagues to happen. Uh, so this is where uh, we are definitely divided and competing a lot, but there still is a commonality of interest. In a regular industry, let's say hospitality or even FMCG, you might see very, very small shade of commonality of interest. But in, in, in football, in sports, I think the commonality of interest factor is very, very strong. And what do you do as managers, as, as future managers, as future professionals? What do you do? You harness this passion in creating some economic models that work for you and your organization in form of tickets, merchandise, as well as memberships. Uh, also, as an industry, uh, sports organization differ a little 
a uh, little vis-a-vis uh, -vis the private or public listed companies who essentially are, are there to make profits. Yes, uh, even professional sports, the importance to profit is given, but then there are many other factors like winning competition, signing a star player, providing services to stakeholders and members, fan development programs, community development, which go beyond the economics side of it. Uh, just to give an example, worldwide, only three to four uh, biggest football clubs really make money, really make profits. And most of the other clubs, while they are profit driven entities, while they are commercial entities, they still uh, do not uh, reflect profits year on year, but they still keep on going back and, and exist and survive. And this is again, very, very unique thing, because if you go to a regular um, industry and uh, you know a regular company or an organization if they are not making uh, profits over a certain period of time i think they will discontinue uh, to exist but when you talk about clubs they exist more than 50 years 60 years and 100 years in europe essentially because there is always some sort of funding available even if they are not making monies and this is where a basic uh, summary of uh, distinction between sports organization and private organization. In sports organization, we are always talking about sustainability. Private organization is driven by profits. Uh, Non-financial objectives could be a priority. So if Paris Saint-Germain ends up signing Nike, uh, signing Messi, or uh, last see, uh, you know, last two seasons they had signed uh, uh, Neymar also. Uh, I am very, very certain looking at their financials, it was not a very economic sensitive uh, transaction, but they still uh, managed to do that. And and top of it, imagine Messi is also going to go, go there now. But uh, for, for private organization, financial objective becomes very, very supreme and paramount. We play for trophies and uh, private organization will look, will look at profitability. Uh, we are equally concerned about the player acquisition and uh, on, on private organization side, workforce enhancement is something that uh, becomes a uh, priority. Uh, community engagement is very, very important. While the same thing can happen in private organization, but there always is a motivation to create a com consumer base. Sports organization look, is looking at fans and private organizations would look at a lot of influencers. Competitive balance also becomes very, very important. It relates to the commonality of interest. If all the teams, in the league are doing well if the the outcomes are not very very certain if it's unpredictable the interest in that particular uh, league or the team really really goes up and while the private organization will always want certainty will always want predictability but in sporting circles yes you would want to win but even an unex unexpected result can actually work on your favor so these are a few elements uh, students i thought maybe i'll just give you a little uh, you know, uh, insight on where there are some unique features of, of our industry. If you look at uh, the entire model of sports industry, it's divided in uh, three brackets. Uh, when you're looking at the public sector, which is definitely the government, uh, is focused on building sports infrastructure because it takes a lot of time, a lot of energies as well as uh, investments. Uh, sports policies, policies are something that uh, the public sector drives. Uh, the legal framework, uh, the al alignment with the national, state, and local governments is something that public sector, the government agencies or institutions or organizations are, are focusing on. And they really become a very, very important pillar because even if you go around in Goa and very, very close to where you are, uh, the Shama Prasad Mukherjee Stadium or even the Babamboli Stadium, it's not owned by a private entity. Its investment actually has come from uh, the, the government because they definitely are the stakeholders to create the infrastructure. Private sector, what we would do is uh, these are the organizations involved in sports oriented activities with the objective of making profits, professional leagues and their teams, sponsors, broadcasters, media, sports equipment, manufacturers, even management agencies, all of these uh, bodies comprise of the private sector, which has a very, very specific motive on uh, profitability. And then uh, we keep on talking about development of talent. We keep on talking about grassroots. We keep on talking about youth development. There are these non-profit sector bodies who essentially are looking at these areas. And these are associations, academies, non-profit programs, even driven by a lot of CSR investments, which essentially 
are looking at these areas and mind you while the elite football elite sports elite athletics uh, is is definitely important but till the time we don't figure out the foundation of grassroots and youth development we are not going to get those elite uh, players neeraj chopra i keep on coming back to the same example today if he had not got the right kind of support since the time he was 11 years old uh, with the infrastructure from the public sector with some bit of investment from jsw sports which was giving him all the training uh, uh, and and development opportunities i don't think he would have become what he would have become so there was a private uh, public sector uh, investment involved there was a private sector uh, push involved and as well as the csr investments coming from jsw sports which made the dreams of millions happen uh, this is the larger ecosystem of uh, uh, sports in india and starting off with again uh, just just uh look at look at the legends over here we are essentially talking about the blue marks and um the the orange and the purple marks uh indicating uh, the the section of the ecosystem that uh, this the uh, organization belongs to so if you talk about the sports governments essentially it's driven by ministry of youth affairs and sports sports authority of india and also has a relevance to indian olympic association the federations states uh, sports association as well as district sports association when it comes to governments as i said earlier it definitely is driven by the public sector a lot when you talk about talent scouting and training of players uh, this is where a lot of non uh, profit foundation and academies come in again a lot of it is being driven by csr these days sports authority of india definitely plays a role uh, the federations as well as the uh sports specific uh, institutions are also uh, big big um, institutions and organizations uh, behind talent scouting and training uh training of trainers which is again coaching the coaches because without good coaches you can't have good players and athletes and this is where a lot of universities and non profit academies have come in uh there are institutions like uh, lakshmi bai national university of physical education uh the federations definitely have their own initiatives licenses that goes to coaches as well as trainers and this is where i think the trainers uh, training and coaches education becomes very very important sports infrastructure we've already spoken about how the government definitely is the key stakeholder uh when it comes to the equipment side of it uh, uh definitely uh, there's a lot of provision factored in from the central and state governments just today uh, i was reading um you know you know a news report which essentially speaks about the investment that has gone in, in equipment like uh, javelin uh, uh, spears that uh, neeraj chopra uses and uh, even to procure 3 to 4 javelins it was a investment about 30 lakhs which again would have come from the national sports federation uh, leagues and tournaments essentially which goes into more of the private domain is uh, driven by for profit bodies like franchise sponsors broadcasters and other institutions uh, and i don't think there's a lot of interest from the government to basically participate in those profit generating activities and when you talk about performance incentives and this is where the government comes in today if you look at bajrang punia today if you look at pv sindhu and uh, uh, lavlina burghain i think that the kind of incentives that have come to them is in crores and also the incentives have come in form of jobs and uh, promotions in in their departments so i think all of that essentially again comes back uh, driven by the public sector uh, this is very important again as i said you know the sports governance bit starts off with the government and ultimately uh, who knows maybe some political party might actually win uh, the next upcoming elections based on the olympic performances so this is how the circle kind of is created in the sports ecosystem um i'll get a little more into what is the whole aspect of professional sports uh while sports recreation and uh, games is something that we have all around us but when you talk about professional sports and why i'm talking about professional sports because people like you and me who are going into the industry we are a lot more concerned about the professionalization of sports rather than only the development side why because it, th there are economic uh, activities attached to it there's um a professional organization that needs to be created around it and this is where i would like to focus on this a little more professional sports definitely will rely on elaborate infrastructure it might not own it but still it needs to access it rent it or have a uh, ut utility factor uh, factored in uh, 
uh, commercial nature definitely all the initiatives that we will have in professional sports need to have a very very small commercial uh, strong commercial uh, orientation media becomes very very important uh, because media then uh, translates into uh, the economics in terms of sponsorships and gate receipts so this is essentially becomes very very important uh, support to other sectors is also uh, something that professional sports can do so today if you are talking about professional sports being the, in the domain of private sector uh, they also offer a lot of support let's let's say to a state government of odisha again i'm sure a lot of people uh, would have uh, come to know about the connection between uh, hockey as well as odisha uh, if there essentially is a success of any commercial venture in a state like odisha uh it can have some bit of impact on sports tourism it can have ha have some bit of impact on the profiling of the state and this is where i think uh the the support to other sectors not only uh the the public sector but also to generate some bit of funding to go to non profit sector which essentially is engaged in uh talent development as well as nurturing of uh, young uh, youth uh, sports people uh, becomes very very important and i'll just give you a little uh, idea in terms of how uh, the core of professional sports is kind of created at the core of professional uh, sport uh, lies the governing body as well as the federation because these are the people who then set the framework and rules regulations and really really uh, give it an anchor uh, in terms of whatever needs to happen uh, with with professional sports then comes in uh, the organizers organizers as well as the league offices uh, these are the leagues in uh, you know whole who definitely are putting a long term sustainable and viable project together and to participate in that particular league uh, uh, are the franchises and athletes uh, depending on if it's an individual game or if it's a team team effort uh, alongside what becomes very very important is the role of broadcaster because a broadcaster is the one who can take the action on ground to millions and millions of people thereby generating a lot of content as well as uh, interest not only from sponsors but also a uh, lot of uh, investments that can come through various modes and this is again where a lot of agencies who supply their services as well as products uh, can come into play and lastly uh, the role of development programs cannot be undermined and this is where again as i said if for professional sports we need the elitest of the athletes we need to have the foundation we need to have the grassroots we need to have the youth development constantly supplying the talent and this is where even if from whatever resources which in also includes a lot of it from csr uh, the development programs become very very important media it's a little uh, different than a broadcaster but a broadcaster is the rights holder uh, when it comes to uh, that that the respective uh, professional sport league or or a tournament but media in general uh, is could be the traditional media as well as uh, the digital uh, media which really amplifies all the stories that are uh, going on uh, around that particular league or the professional sport infrastructure owners and operators definitely become very very important while they might lie in the public domain uh, it's very very important for them to also be integrated for them to be also aware how uh, all these leagues are benefiting uh, you know the infrastructure available last but not the least uh, the entire interest the entire broadcasting the entire media support essentially will fall if we don't have the critical element of fans involved and this is where the higher number of fans will uh give a massive impetus to all the stakeholders who are who are involved even the core player even the athlete or even the franchise if they don't have the fans in the stadium i don't think anybody is excited if you don't have the fans in the stadium the broadcaster might walk out if you don't have the fans in the stadium i don't think you can inspire the next generation of uh, young kids uh, who are coming through and wanting to become the elite player i just want to give you again you know summarize it in a table form uh you you you've seen all these listed uh, type of organizations uh, on that particular chart and their nature uh, in terms of what uh, is a, a critical role that they have and the business uh, so a governing body uh, administration with autonomous status governed by sports code uh, is essentially looking at fund generation via grants and sponsorship and this also includes a massive massive amount that 
uh, comes from union as well as state budgets. A leak, the business model is very, very clear. Uh, and their revenue generation models uh, are ingrained in broadcasting rights as well as central revenues. A franchise will look at uh, club revenues and portion of central revenues. A sports management company like us uh, or an agency might look at fees and commissions. Uh, and brands, uh, even if they are offering sports uh, goods or uh, value added services, we always are looking at markups. Uh, infrastructure, uh, the stadia facility uh, will work on rentals, media on subscription, broadcast on advertisement, uh, development programs based on free, and uh, fan and fan groups like Bharat Army or Forza Goa uh, Foundation or Gaur Army essentially will look at subscription. So I, I'm, I'm more than happy to share uh, this presentation with you, but this essentially will give you a little sense in terms of what kind of organization is involved in what kind of business. Uh, we've spoken enough about um, the, the growth that uh, everybody has experienced in the sports uh, uh, you know, domain. I think it was, uh, for us, the inflection point was uh, the, the introduction of IPL. While cricket definitely for, since 83 was a great, great property, but the national team as well as uh, the, the regional uh, leagues like uh, Ranji Trophy were, were, were the ones which were uh, shining bright. Uh, but to create that bit of club culture, to create that bit of league uh, format, I think IPL really borrowed a lot of concepts, not only from English Premier League, but also uh, Major League Soccer, Major League bas Baseball, and then brought in all the all the best practices into the IPL. Uh, but uh, the increase in number of uh, fans, followers, participants has been growing massively. So much so that uh, the, the sports industry is being turned as the sunrise industry. Now, where will that take us? I think uh, that the future is very, very positive and very bright because even right from on ground to, to uh, all the media channels that we are looking at, I think there's massive, massive level of interest. Uh, and beyond that, yes, there's a new format of businesses and organizations coming up in sports, uh, which includes esports, which includes uh, betting, which uh, you know is trying to encourage a lot of engagement. I don't have an opinion on betting, but I, I still believe uh, that betting is already happening. Uh, the idea is not how to curb it or how to, uh, how, to, how to eradicate it. The idea should be how to regulate it. And this essentially happens world over. So I think in India, I think we are going to adopt the same kind of philosophy. It's not going to be about being the inspector and trying to see what's good or what's bad. But I think, uh, you know, the brands like Dream 11 and all that have proved that even within India, I think we need more of regulations rather than a, uh, rather than, you know, having having more of a watchdog policy uh, on, on betting. Uh, tourism, I think Odisha has been a very, very bright example in terms of how they've utilized sports, uh, sports uh, uh, infrastructure, sports events, uh, sports uh, development programs to attract more and more. Uh, economic benefits for the state. I think Goa can definitely look at the same uh, possibility because we have the massive infrastructure, hospitality, um, and uh, also the culture that that uh, Goa has in terms of sports. I think that uh, can can really enable us to become a big big destination for sports tourism. Um, and even if you look at political pat patronage, I think uh, uh, a lot of political uh, institutions and organizations have started looking at sports as a means to uh, connect with youth, as a means to connect with the communities. And uh, while, again, I don't have an opinion on that, but uh, it, it already is an organization that already are organizations which are looking at integrating sports into their strategy. Uh, so hopefully, Till this point in time, I, I, I believe, um, you know, you might have got a little conceptual clarity in terms of how our industry operates, who are the key stakeholders. I'm sure time and again, you might be, you know, reading about them. You might be interacting on these uh, kind of topics, even in your general conversations and general life. But I just wanted to give you a little academic overview on to this. And within within uh, the sports industry, a uh, certain bit of management skills uh, that uh, I think always, always helps us. I'm sure in any other subject of your MBA program, you might have, uh, you know, looked at uh, these uh, concepts or models, but I just want to run you through them. Uh, a skill is nothing but an ability to do something very, very well and create an expertise. And this can come from education, experience, practice, and intelligence. And how does it relate to sports management skills? Uh, where I think we have three different buckets. 
uh, within sports management. One is technical skills, which could be more to do with the sports and its nuances. Uh, when you're talking about coaches, when you're talking about referees, I think these are very, very heavy on technical skills. Conceptual skills, which could be abstract, creative, and uh, uh, very, very uh, strategy-oriented uh, skills. And this is where uh, you, you can essentially look at uh, people more to do with the planning, more of the strategies, administration coming into this particular thing. Uh, and when it comes to the interpersonal thing, uh, skills, uh, it essentially is about leveraging human potential and being comfortable with uh, people around you and getting the best out of it. And again, sports is very, very uh, high on human conversations, emotion, contacts. And this is where uh, a lot of interpersonal skills uh, can come into play. Now, my point is that uh, all these skills are interrelated. If you are a good sports manager, you need to have all these skills integrated in good quantity. It's not about you just focusing on one particular skill and forgetting about. I think as again, general managers or sporting managers, I think a good combination of all these skills is very, very important. Uh, and the elements within these management skills are planning, communication, decision making, delegation, problem solving and motivation. And this summary essentially gives you a little orientation whereby again the governing uh, you know the types of organization that we spoke about uh, in 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 the in the sporting ecosystem uh, and their businesses uh, what could be the predominant uh, skill as well as the element of skill that might help you to be a better manager again i'll be more than happy to share this and again this is a little subjective guys i mean uh, uh, you can always debate, you can always discuss, you can always uh, uh, criticize this this uh, particular slide. But with, with my orientation, with my experiences, I've been able to just put this across to you. But have a look at it uh, whenever uh, you would want to get a little uh, deeper into intros introspecting. If the skill sets that you have, how could it relate to a particular organization or a business uh, within the sporting industry? Uh, the organization structure within the uh, sporting uh, domain is very, very similar to uh, what you would find in any other industry uh, where, again, you require the right kind of systems, you require the right kind of information flow, as well as set of rules and responsibilities. So all the organization that we spoke about, guys, I think will essentially be driven by a structure. Uh, the core to it is the organization goal. And uh, beyond that, obviously, uh, the systems to be established, the communication and the information flow, as well as the definition of rules and responsibilities becomes very, very important. Uh, types of organization, again, I'm sure uh, either maybe in HR subjects or uh, maybe organizational subjects, you might have uh, you know looked at it. But even if you talk about uh, the organization within uh, the, the sports, all the types of organization that we looked at in the earlier slide, um, uh, can be administrative and this is where maybe uh, the, the authorities and the government bodies would like to function a lot more functional which could be the leagues which could be uh, the, the, uh, the the franchises uh, divisional when it comes to may, maybe a, a bigger infrastructure project that you might want to conceptualize or matrix my organization uh, which was nike at one point in time uh, because it was globally stretched because it has it had a lot of elements not only of product but also sports marketing come coupled together so i had a couple of bosses i was reporting into not only the marketing director who was sitting in india but also the sports marketing head who was sitting out of the us so you can definitely adopt uh, uh matrix uh, organizational structure for yourself also so guys uh, the first part of our uh, conversation as i said was to give a little orientation on the industry the second part essentially was a little more personal uh, how do you look at your own skills and try to relate it to the organization that we already had discussed uh, for you to become a lot more effective as a manager uh, as a future professional so for 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 the 35 to 40 minutes that i had planned guys i thought i'll give you this bit of orientation but most importantly now is for me to uh, take any of the insights any of the questions and also let me tell you that i come into these kind of sessions uh, which i do with other groups of students as well as professionals not only to go out and share my experiences but also take a lot of insights because you are the young generation you are a lot more closer to uh, the what what's kind of happening uh, in, on the field, on the ground. So it would be great uh, to receive any kind of critical thought, uh, any kind of insight, any kind of question, any kind of clarification on what we've discussed so far or anything else you might want to know, uh, which is in my domain, I'll be more than happy to share with you.
Uh, yes, so we have questions in the chat box. Uh, okay. Uh, what is your opinion on the budget with reference to sports? Is it sufficient for us? Okay, so there are two levels of budgets that we have. Who, who, uh, whose question is it? Uh, Amir. I'm... Amir? Yeah. Amir. Hi, Amir. Thanks for your question. It's a very valid question, Amir. And I'm, sh I'm, I'm very glad that, uh, you know, the young minds like you are actually th uh, thinking and uh, talking about a uh, very, very important aspect, which is resources. I think uh, the budgets, uh, be it at the union level as well as the state level, uh, across all the regions are uh, not as much as we should be devoting. Uh, because for me, um, sports is not only about gaining that medal and getting that bit of profiling. It definitely adds a lot to the communities. It adds health. It, it helps you to reduce your medical bills. It helps to reduce your uh, inf uh, investment on health infrastructure. Uh, so from that point of view, it's not only about doing good to the society, having a very positive generation, because sports is maybe the only medium that can offer you uh, that bit of life skills. Uh, uh, you know, as compared to any other academic form. So I think it's not only about, uh, you know, uh, investing in sports uh, only for the right reasons, but also for economical reasons. Uh, so this is where I think my opinion is definitely very, very low. Uh, because even if you add up those numbers, the other day I was looking at the union budget uh, numbers and it's, it's not even going to give us enough infrastructure for a lot of young kids to just go out and uh, uh start just just to play and be fit forget about specialized uh needs that we might have for sports including track and field wrestling boxing football or whatever it might be and this is where the private sector is jumping in uh is jumping in with their contributions or whatever but still uh the the, the impetus that we need uh, from the government uh, again believing that it has long-term very very massive beneficial effects I think needs to grow more and more. And this is where, you know, there is already a strong lobby uh, working. And uh, our uh, ex-union uh, sports minister, uh, Mr. Kiran Rijiju, I think had done a brilliant job. And now we have Anurag Thakur. So I think with these kind of people, we might uh, get a little serious look at, at the budgets. Uh, yes, so one more question. Uh, privatization of infrastructure of sports, is it a good option to our sports industry? Uh, this is why uh, Amir again, uh, Amir, yeah. okay, uh, perfect. So uh, yes, Amir, again, very, very valid point. I think I, both your points essentially have been focusing on more of the strategic and, uh, you know, a public sector kind of uh, investments. Um, there has been a model which has been experimented certain places, which includes Odisha, which is called PPP, uh, Public Private uh, Partnership uh, on Sports Infrastructure also. Uh, because what was happening that we have seen a lot of infrastructure that was built by the government remained very political and essentially um, it, it became more of a white elephant where there was a lot more focus on maintaining it and uh, you know there was a lot of investment on maintaining it uh, rather than leveraging it uh, and this is where the private sector is actually coming in and saying not only really let me you know help you to build that infrastructure but also utilize it so I think for me, it's a no brainer uh, for us. We need to uh, create a lot more of those partnerships so that the private entities are a lot more into, uh, you know, oriented in terms of utilization of it, bring events, bring in training programs, bring, bringing uh, competitions into that infrastructure because with only government doing it, maybe the infrastructure is not even getting utilized for 45 days, more than 45 days in 365 days. But with the public private partnership, I think that model can change. Any more questions? Yeah. So I think we are done. Uh, so Perfect, guys. Uh, so what I can possibly do is, um, you know, uh, just just uh, share the uh, presentation uh, with with uh, the coordinator, and uh, we'll be will be happy to you know have any of your thoughts, even if you have. The, and I'll I'll also uh, share my email ID along with that. If you do have any uh, possible um interest or or um feedback i think would be very very happy to have that from any of you yes a quick word of thanks uh, 
somebody raised their hand. Janito, I think Janito. So how would you like a, uh, uh, like AISF? Uh, we have to see like it has to be profitable also, but at the same time we need to see the players developing also. Like how would you recommend them like uh, to let football also uh, improve as well as make it a profitable uh, outcome for them? So, okay, so Janitor, if I'm understanding it right, you're talking about All India Football Federation, how their responsibility to develop the player, but also uh, make it viable and profitable for uh, you know the participants and participants. Is, is that your question? Right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so All India Football Federation has an interesting role. Uh, well, technically, it's an autonomous body with no profit objective, uh, and it essentially is a stakeholder uh, which looks at the national team which looks at all the educational programs around refereeing coaching and it also looks at all the all the grassroots uh, related activity now uh, this is where the private orientation comes in where while they are the key stakeholders in terms of uh, running the league framing the policy framing the uh, infra, fr framing the, all the rules and regulations and all that but it always is seen, even with BCCI, IPL, IPL definitely is owned by BCCI, but it still functions as a separate company altogether. Okay, uh, so while with all the fund generation, the key responsibility of All India Football Federation is to uh, glorify the national team, and that thereby, you know, the best of the players can get get in the best of the opportunity. Uh, grassroots and youth development, and this is where, along with the states, they need to ensure that there's a lot of work happening on that front, which comes, uh, you know, uh, in the in the in the talent development kind of uh, domain and uh, education because you know we, we've been thinking about coaching development and referees education i think that also becomes very very important uh, for that they receive all the funds either in form of grants or sponsorship uh, from uh, let's say the public sector as well as the private sector uh, but uh, when it comes to the league which again has been new phenomenon uh, you know as recent as 15 years uh, for for us in india I think this essentially is being done in a partnership with a private company like Reliance. Uh, so I think um, over a period of time, I think they've been able to do a reasonable job. At one point of time, there wasn't enough resources for for All India Football Federation to do development work. But now, thankfully, the resources have almost tripled. Uh, and uh, while while for a country like India, I think um, still it's it's less. Uh, but over a period of time, uh, Janitan, I think. We'll be able to get more and more support, more and more resources, and the quality of everything that we are doing on ground from the AFF side. I think it'll be a lot better. Hello, sir. My name is Neha. I had one question. Uh, like a uh, few games like cricket, football, these are known to people, but there are some sports that which even uh, people don't know about till till now. Like uh, fencing will be there. Whereas been a first thing for the Olympic they have uh, come for Olympic fencing then Taekwondo such games are there which are not public to people like badminton is everyone knows the Taekwondo is there which people don't know about it then how can we bring these sports to people and make it uh, public like uh, they can be uh, very 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 good very good point very good points now very good point I'm I'm happy to take this question. So uh, Neha, uh, with you being the current generation, you are essentially talking about badminton being a known sport. But when I was your age, uh, badminton was not something that a lot of people knew about. Okay. Uh, in the history, obviously, Prakash Padukon, who happens to be Deepika Padukon's father, uh, had won something. And then after that, obviously, there was nothing. But then came along a generation of Saina, uh, Saina Nehwals and PV Sindhu, which have now given your generation enough bit of awareness. So today, if you look at fencing, Bhavani Devi obviously is giving us that ray of hope. So what happens with sports, no, um, success breeds success. So today, uh, because we had Vijinder Singh, who won an Olympic uh, bronze, uh, 10 years back, uh, we, we essentially are looking at newer boxers coming in. Uh, we have Mericom, uh, you know, who uh, who created a you know biopic uh, on her own, uh, on herself. So I think I think that profiling happens with a lot of successes that happen today. I think Javelin is again being known because of the success that we created. So I think it's a long, long process. While yes, infrastructure development, youth development is very, very important. But what success can do? 
at an international level, what success can do at national level is something which can inspire uh, bigger generations. So today we, we might have one track and field medal, but if we have two uh, in Paris 2024, I think the whole uh, whole uh, you know scope of that particular sport uh, will change. Uh, so Sneha, I think uh, you know anything in sports is very very uh, long and consistent process. Uh, but uh, believe me, the sports that you are also talking about, if we find a champion tomorrow, let's say uh, within Goa itself, I mean, we have something uh, that a lot of bones play, beach soccer. But but we, we don't, you know, have great recognition. But tomorrow, if we have uh, a good, good beach soccer competition coming in, an event coming in, or maybe a beach soccer player playing in Europe, I think suddenly uh, the world will explode. Uh, same with fencing, same with, let's say, taekwondo, same with martial arts. Tomorrow, if we actually get a guy, uh, or a girl, of course, uh, who, who goes out and wins a medal uh, in, in uh, you know, uh, some, some martial art competition. I think the, the, the following for that will also happen. Again, going back to the badminton example, 10 years back, it was not very well known. Today is very well known and followed. And there's a structure, there's monies, there's support involved. Uh, just because over a period of 10 years, that success has helped us to breed more success. Uh, and, and that's how it's going to be in future also. So, do you have yes, the sir. time to uh, answer three more questions? Uh, uh, guys, I ha already have a meeting scheduled, uh, but but I mean I am seeing the chat box and I can be very very quick. Uh, uh, sorry, I mean I didn't know I mean that there would be that bit of uh, uh, you know uh, spillover in terms of the questions. Uh, but I'll I'll just go through uh, the questions on the chat and immediately try to react. But I'll have to leave in two minutes because. There's, there's a call schedule with uh, you know a client of mine in Barcelona, so uh, I can't miss it. Okay, so Edward, uh, if private entities enter sports industry, won't their training and practice become more expensive for athletes in general? I think uh, uh, no, uh, because uh, I think it's it's all about value for money. It's all about value proposition. Uh, there would be entities like let's say the biggest of the clubs from abroad who come to do football training. They might be expensive, but we might have equal number of uh, good uh, local coaches who might be able to give us. So I think the industry will rationalize while we will have an expensive option. We will also have a very effective uh, low cost and quality option. Uh, and then I think we, we consumer is the king. So we might have uh, options to choose from. Uh, Jude uh, uh, is saying, sir, your thoughts on esports in India, given the lack of network and technology penetration. I think esports need a little more structure because right now it's everywhere because the internet, again, you know, the way it is, it's up in the clouds, but I think people are trying to figure out how do you want to structure the whole organization, the whole structure uh, to make a bigger competition. So, so today, uh, the way you have an ISL or an IPL, I think if that structure falls in place, which is sturdy, which is very, very airtight, I think we'll see a lot of, but again, with all the initiatives that are happening right now, I think it's very, very exciting and it's very, very promising. Uh, Neeraj, uh, okay, uh, namesake of Neeraj Chopra, very happy to see you. If you were president owner of Barcelona, what would you have done about Messi? I think I would have done exactly the same thing but that has happened. I think there are a lot of accomplished people who are sitting there uh, trying to figure out things. I think I think uh, they've done it well. And uh, I think I, I really appreciate the situation they are in. I know there's a lot of emotion involved. So I would have done exactly uh, the, the same what they have done. Uh, Alan, our good friend Alan, uh, good to see you, Alan. Uh, Alan has uh, mentioned uh, uh, of his name in my book because again he's a fantastic journalist and a good friend who's done a lot uh, for for the media circle in uh, Goa. Uh, considering Goa being a small market and having 30 plus association of sports, how these sporting bodies gather funds and sustain. You must be aware. It is difficult, Alan, it is difficult. But again, as I said, you know, uh, we need to learn a lot from a uh, lot of other federations, uh, associations uh, who have uh, done, uh, you know, great, great bit of work in terms of integrating their local companies, local investments, and, and um, uh, you know, also also a lot of regulators and uh, as well as the policy makers. I think we need to learn a lot. Uh, Goa, while it's a massive, massive advantage, uh, but uh, I, I do see a lot of conflicting issues going on time and again. Uh, I think if we are able to sort it out, if we have, uh, if we can have just a very, very strong sports policy, which we gives us, gives everybody, all the stakeholders, some bit of direction, uh, in terms of how to go about everything that we want to do, I think we'll be able to do it in uh, unison. Uh, easier said than done, um, but but I think that is the only solution. Also, having a very 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 um, 
uh, good good updated sports policy which can drive uh, everybody uh, to work in the same direction yes thanks alan thank you so much good to see you uh, thank you sir uh, a quick word of thanks a graceful and a warm welcome to our most valued speakers uh, sukvinder singh worthy teachers management committee and the students of goa business school on behalf of goa business school and the entire fraternity of the and the department i would like to extend my most sincere and a very hearty vote of thanks to the speaker who spared time from his busy schedule to grace us occasion thank you sir it was a pleasure to have you this morning last but not the least i would like to thank each one of you for being there this morning thank you thank you guys thank you sir there bora karo and uh, we hope to see you back on the campus when everything gets gets back to normal see thank you guys thank you sir